Hello there. All right. I cannot tell my story without telling some background of how I am, the way that I am. I, like I said, was born into this religion. And from the very start of my life, it was, it was tough. I was born with cerebral palsy, which, granted, if you look at me now, I don't have any of the signs and symptoms of it. I was lucky. But, my father, I was told by him that he said my name as I was blue on the weight scale or whatever and he breathed life into me now granted this is coming from a witness okay at the time <laughs> and he told me that he said my name and I, I responded, I took a breath, and I was basically blue, born dead, shouldn't be alive. So he took that, I can only assume, as he, Jehovah had his back. And from then on, it was, I had a semi-normal childhood, childhood from when I was real tiny. My mother was not a witness. And my father was. Which, that in and of itself, that creates a problem. Because with one believer and one non believer, I celebrated birthdays, I celebrated Christmas, and everything was right in the world. And he allowed it. Still drinking my coffee. And I lost my ability to walk when I was two. And my father retaught me how to walk. He did all this stuff. He basically poured his his, his self into me. Great for a witness, right? Well, later on, when I was seven, my mother and father were fighting, and they fought all the time. All the time. And I remember coming down the stairs one day, and at seven, I yelled at the both of them, stop fighting. And they both looked at me. They looked at each other. And I went up the stairs, and there was quiet for about five minutes. And he decided to go and open his mouth to my mom. And he goes and he says, look at what you are doing to him. 
he being the instigator. The Jehovah's Witness that he was, he decided to go and restart the fight that I had stopped. At that point, I knew they were going to divorce, which they did later on. And all the while, still the books, I wanted to learn. And he did later on. So between 8 and 11, I was with my mother and going through schooling. And like I said before, the kids knew that I was different. At that age, I didn't preach much because I was too young. But at 11, I wanted to go and visit my father. It was the worst mistake of my life. He posed the question to me, what would you rather have? Everlasting life or a million dollars? And naturally, I, I, I answered a million dollars. And he corrected me and showed me that everlasting life can be worth more than all the money in the world. So I started studying the live forever book the red one the one that is no longer in print so I went through that book started going to the meetings and 11 12 13 and 14 he would go with the meetings with me. He would go to the meetings with me. And everything was all right. It made sense I was being indoctrinated. Never mind the fact that I had already had these books around me my entire life. And like I said, this is just my recollection. If it just doesn't quite add up. There's a lot of things that happened between then and now that makes the details a little fuzzy. But what I do know is that at 15, it, is, it was 15, I started making decisions on my own and again without going into great detail my home life and the kingdom hall were two distinct and separate entities because in the one hand this person who was all love and all righteous and a massive hypocrite would go and say uh, I love you forever no matter what always and forever no matter what I love you always and forever no matter what there we go and it was usually after I had done something wrong and he would try to discipline me you know take my things away and that sort of nature but I was a headstrong person I didn't allow 
for the lack of a better term. Um, anyone to tell me what to do within reason at that age. Because things didn't make sense. Now, I was 11 at the time. Teeny little thing. And because things didn't make sense, I had to grow up mentally. And that's real hard, real hard to do in a, a cult, because you're indoctrinated to believe this, and this is why, and if you go against it, then no one will talk to you. And I didn't want that. So, I have this Jehovah's Witness family on one hand, which I told one of the brothers there that I was close with what was going on in my home life, and he told me to basically stay silent. At that point, I knew I was completely alone. I didn't know what to do. And even now, it's kind of difficult to speak about because what do you do? You're mentally alone in this congregation of loving, caring adults and children and whatever else, and you can't speak out against what is happening to you in your home life because you'll just be told to stay silent. And again, that didn't sit right with me, it did not make sense. So I stayed silent and I knocked on doors and I went out in the preaching work with the pioneers later on. And I was never baptized, like I said, but I still went because it was better than going home. And it was enjoyable for the most part. It taught me how to speak. 